Presents the Encore Theater. The Encore Theater play tonight, Now Voyager. Our star is Maureen O'Sullivan. Tonight presents another in a new series of great dramatic programs. Some of our stories are fact, the struggles and accomplishments of great men of medicine. Others are fiction, stories of devotion to an ideal, individual heroism, or courage. By these programs, Shenley Laboratories would remind you that medical science and progress is not cold, impersonal research, or pages of statistics, but a warm human story told in living terms. Whether it's the life of one of medicine's immortals or the everyday record of service rendered by your own physician. And now, now Voyager, starring Maureen O'Sullivan with George Zuko and Elliot Lewis. In his study in his great sanitarium at Cascades, New York, the world-renowned psychiatrist Dr. Henry Jackwood sits, writing in his journal. I met Charlotte Vale for the first time in her own home. Her sister Lisa had come to me and asked me if I would consider taking Charlotte's case. There were details about it that interested me, so I went to Boston. The moment I met Charlotte's mother, I began to understand a lot of things. Charlotte was a late child, Dr. Jackwood. The child of my old age, I've always called her. I was well into my forties when she was born. Her father passed on soon after. My ugly duckling. Of course, it's true that all late-in-life children are marked. Well, often such children are not wanted. That can mark them. I've kept her close by me, always. When she was young, foolish, I made decisions for her. And always the right decisions. You would think a child would wish to repay a mother's love and kindness. Yes, Mother. Hello, Lisa. Charlotte, darling. This is my very good friend, Dr. Jacquith. I wanted him to see you. How do you do, Miss Vale? Dr. Jacquith? Well, Lisa feels that your recent peculiarities, your fits of crying, your secretiveness, indicate that you're on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Is that what you're trying to achieve? Why, no. No, no, Dr. it isn't Jacquith at all. Dr. has a sanitarium. In Vermont, I believe. Probably one of those places with a high-wire fence and yowling inmates. Well, now, I wouldn't want anyone to have that mistaken notion. Cascade is just a place in the country. People come there when they're tired. You go to the seashore, they come there. The very word psychiatry, Dr. Jackwith. Uh, doesn't that fill you with shame, Charlotte? My daughter, a member of our family. There's nothing shameful in my work or frightening or anything else. It's very simple, really, what I try to do. People walk, we walk along a road, they come to a fork in the road. They're confused, they don't know which way to take. I just put up a signpost. Not that way. This way. If you'll excuse me, I'll... I'll... Miss Vale, wait. Hmm? Don't run away. And look, I wonder if I might ask you a favor. Will you be nice enough to show me around the house? It's such hmm? a beautiful place, and one doesn't often get the chance to see these old Boston houses. I'd rather like to see what your room is like. I'm not your patient yet, Doctor. Oh, of course not. I've seen the rooms of a lot of people who aren't my patients... My friends, I'd hope that you and I... Oh, but of course, if you'd rather not. It's on the floor above. When I was 17, I stayed out once and until after midnight. That stair tread hasn't been fixed since. Here we are. She locks her door. Make a note of it, Doctor. That's significant, isn't it? Well, it signifies it's your door. I've never heard it said that a woman's home is not her castle. Here it is, Doctor. My castle. Her castle. A set of mahogany furniture selected by her mother. Very obviously selected by her mother. A picture of the Colosseum by moonlight. An etching of pigeons in St. Mark's Square. A Gloucester sea scene. On one side of the room was a workbench complete with a set of tools for carving ivory. On the bench there was some raw ivory. A half-finished figurine. And two exquisitely designed boxes. 
Did you do this? Oh, why shouldn't I? Well, the point is how you could. They're beautiful. I have a very real admiration for people who are clever with their hands. You may have one of them if you like. Oh, I would indeed. Well, that's very kind of you. I'm very fond of such things. Uh, you uh, wouldn't happen to have a cigarette hidden away someplace, would you? Do you think I hide cigarettes in my room, Doctor? Oh, no, it isn't that. But I must have left mine in my car. Well, where do I hide them, Doctor? On the shelves behind the books? Cigarettes and medicated sherry and the books that my mother would never allow me to read? A whole secret life hidden up here behind a locked door? You're very perceiving, Doctor. Your mother's quite a tyrant, isn't she? My mother's kept everything she could out of my life. When I was 20, I fell in love. But the man wasn't good enough for a veil of Boston. What man is suitable, Doctor? She never found one. What man would come along and look at me and say, I want you? I'm fat. My mother disapproves of the falderals of diet. Look at these shoes. My mother approves of sensible shoes. Look at the books on my shelves. My mother approves of good, solid books. I'm my mother's well-loved daughter. I'm her companion, her servant. My mother, my mother, my mother. <laughs> You'll never get another pair of eyes, as your mother would say, if you spoil them with tears. Oh, Doctor. Doctor Jackwood, can you help me? When we were talking downstairs, you talked about a fork in the road. Oh, there are so many other forks further along the road. So many. Put away your book and wipe off your eyeglasses and come downstairs. I'm going to su uh, suggest to your mother that you come to Cascades for a few weeks. <laughs> weeks of sun and rest and diet for Charlotte Vale. Weeks while her tears retreated and her hands became more steady. As time passed with her sister Lisa's help, her appearance was changed. The sensible shoes disappeared from more attractive ones. Her hair was cut to hang loose on her shoulders, and her clothes were chosen to set off her new personality. Outwardly, she was a completely poised, lovely woman. But inwardly... Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Lisa. Dr. Jackwith. Certainly is beautiful out here in the gardens. Oh, yes, isn't it? Dr. Jackwith tells me you're almost well. She is. He says I'm well enough to leave here now. That I've got to go home. Oh, Lisa, I, I dread it. I dread it horribly. It's awful, I suppose, not to want to go home and be with... with her, but... but... <laughs> Stop, look and listen. New England conscience on the track. Well, you may not have to go home. Hmm? May I tell her, Dr. Jackwith? Oh, later, maybe. We'll see how she behaves. We have a scheme, your relative and I. Well, what is it? You'll find it out in good time. Uh, this morning, Charlotte, during your office appointment with me, I referred to a quotation, remember? You said it was from Walt Whitman, but, but you couldn't quote it. Oh, that's right. Well, I've, I've had it looked up and typed for you on a slip of paper. If old Walt didn't have you in mind when he wrote this, he had hundreds of others like you. He's put into words what I'd like to say to you now, and far better than I could ever express it. Here, read it. Untold want, by life and land near granted. Now, voyager, sail thou forth to seek... And find. She was nervous when she started on the cruise to South America, and she kept pretty much to herself. The first night, she didn't have the courage to go down to dinner, but on the second, she remembered that I had said, Pull your own weight. Forget you're a, a hidebound New Englander and unbend. Be interested in everything and everybody. Be nice to every human being who crosses your path. This is your table, Miss Vale. Thank you. Miss Vale, may I present Mr. Durant? How do you do? I hope you don't mind sharing a table, but since you are both traveling alone... No, no, not at all. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Duvaux Durant, if you'd like to hear it in its silly entirety. Yeah. I was J.D. in college. My wife calls me J. Duvaux, and I'm Jerry to my friends. How about you? Who are you? What are you? Where do you come from? <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure who I am. If clothes make the man, then at present I'm my sister Lisa. Oh. <laughs> if it's the shoes, I'm her sister June, her daughter June. <laughs> she picked mine. They wear the same size, you see. <laughs> but if it's I, whom inside? I. 
Well, I appear on the passenger list to Charlotte Vale, Boston, Massachusetts. I've heard of Boston. And the name Vale, like Bunker Hill, rings a familiar bell. Oh. Uh, will you go dancing in the lounge with me after dinner, Miss Charlotte of Boston? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not a very good dancer. Well, neither am I. But I have a feeling about us. I have a feeling we're going to dance very well together. I have a wonderful feeling about you and me, Miss Charlotte. Oh, it's wonderful up here on deck, isn't it? The air has a taste to it. Great intoxication, I'm afraid. The ship will be in Rio all day tomorrow. Will you have lunch with me and help me do some shopping for my daughters? You, your daughters? Yes. Here, I'll show you a picture. Oh. Oh, who, who is that knitting? That's Isabel, my wife. The picture isn't very good of Isabel. She'd only looked up and smiled. Well, that's Beatrice by her. And that's Tina sitting with her legs crossed. We hope she won't have to wear glasses always. Tina wouldn't smile for me either. Oh. She's convinced she's an ugly duckling. Does Tina know she wasn't wanted? That's an odd remark. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I really shouldn't have said that. Well, it's odd because it hit so close to the truth. Hmm? Even before she was born, her mother said... Oh, never mind that. By the way, I have something for you. I don't know the first thing about perfumery, oh. but the clerk said this was all right. Oh. It's, uh, it's a mixture of several kinds of flowers. It's called Jolie Fleur. Jerry. It reminded me of you. Oh, Jerry. Jerry. You know this is the first... Oh, you're the first man. This is my first present from a man. I'm glad I could give you your first present. I'm glad I could be the first man to give you one. Oh. I wish things were different. I wish I could be the last man and all the others in between. Oh, I was right. The air is intoxicating. It isn't the air, my darling. It's the moment. And it's you. There were other friends of Jerry Durance's on the ship, a young couple who had been friends of his for years. On the morning the ship docked at Rio, Jerry and Mac were playing deck tennis. And Charlotte and Mac's wife, Deb, sat talking. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard Jerry laugh like that in years. You're good for him, Charlotte. Oh, honestly, when I see what a woman like Isabel can do to a man like Jerry, it makes me boil. She doesn't love him or her children. She doesn't love anyone but herself. Deb, please... Do you mind? I don't want to hear any more about well, it. Well, I think you should. Why, she even made Jerry give up his architecture because she wanted him to do something that would bring in money more quickly. And he could have been a fine architect. Hey, what are you two getting so clubby about? Oh, we're just talking. Play with me, Mac. But I can bet you each of two games out of three. Oh, look. Jerry, we're getting into the harbor. Look, this is the one site in the world that's better than the picture postcards. You shouldn't miss this moment, Jerry. There's only one first sailing into Rio Harbor. See over there? This is my getting off place. Yes. Your boat goes on in three days. Will I see you? Not unless you pay more attention to your guide. Thank you. On your left over there. Sugar loaf? That's right. We'll take a cable car to the top. Up on that mountain, there's something to please your architect's heart. Did Deb tell you I used to be an architect? Look at it, Jerry. The Christus statue. You wouldn't think from here that there's a way to get to the top, but there is. We'll get there. They say that it's the closest, the closest that you can get to heaven. In a moment, we'll return to our play, Now Voyager, and our star, Maureen O'Sullivan. Now, the second act of Now Voyager, starring Maureen O'Sullivan with George Zuko and Elliot Lewis. In the study of his sanitarium at Cascades, the great psychiatrist Dr. Jacquet sits, writing in his journal. Charlotte Vale was definitely on the mend. No more hysteria, no more grief. But she was up against a great problem now, and her future peace of mind depended completely on her response to the problem. 
the Voyager had sailed forth, had sought, had found. On the third day that the ship had remained in Rio, she and Jerry went for a ride high in the mountains above Rio. The driver missed a turn, and the car rolled over the mountain to a small plateau halfway down the mountain. My mother in heaven, what have I done? I said, go forward, the car she's went back with. Are you killed? Are you hurt? Dear senora, senora, are you dead? Here, let me help you out. Uh, you sure you're not hurt? Not a scratch. Oh, God. Oh, Dios mio. Oh, the car. The formerly so beautiful oh, car. Oh, man, well, don't oh, cry. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I, I tell her to go forward. She's go back. Please, senor, I will descend into the valley to get the cavallo <laughs> accord. Well, senor and senor, remain the car. Excuse me. Cavallo <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Oh, I hope he said he'll get a horse and a rope. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Uh Beginning to storm. Well, there's some sort of a shelter over there. Well, come on. We'll run for oh. it. You must have been a boy scout. That's a beautiful fire. Mm. You're very quiet. What are you thinking about? I was pretending, hmm? or wishing, or you might even call it praying. I was thinking how wonderful it would be if you and I were the only two people in the world. We could stay here forever. When you get to be my age, you don't pretend anymore. You know there are no such things as fairy tales or happy endings. We'll be friends, you and I, all our lives. And Do you after. really believe that? Yes. At least I want to believe it. I want to believe that there's a chance for such happiness as this to be carried on somehow, somewhere. Mm, there isn't. In a few days, this will be gone. My footprints in the snow. Leaving no trace when the snow melts. Leaving nothing. Except what we remember. All our lives, wherever you are, wherever I am, we are what our memories are. Whoever gave us this chance to be near each other will give us only one chance. <laughs> Darling, why are you crying? Don't you know what I'm saying? Don't you realize I love you? I know. I know, and I can't believe it. I suppose these are really tears of gratitude. An old maid's gratitude for the crumbs offered. Please don't talk like that. No one ever called me darling before you did. Darling. Jerry. Darling. It never was any more than that. A few gay hours, a blinding moment of revelation. But the two people who lived it would never be the same again. They had the intelligence to recognize love... They had the strength to put it by. Charlotte Vale came back a vibrant, glowing, confident person, and one that seemed completely happy. If you didn't look too deeply in her eyes, she was very lonely for what she'd found and lost. She came to Cascades for a few weeks of rest before going home, and there she met Tina Durance, Jerry's child. I didn't know at that time she knew Durance, and it was completely accidental that Tina was in the next room to Charlotte. She heard Tina crying, and she opened the door and went in. Why, hello. Go away. I know who you are, and I don't like you. You do? Well, who am I? You're my new nurse. No, you're wrong. I'm your new neighbor. How long have you been at Cascade? Ten days. Nearly eleven. And you don't like it very much, do you? No. Well, neither did I at the end of ten days. But the first two weeks are the worst. What's that you have there? Jigsaw puzzle? Uh-huh. Will you let me help you work it? Come in. Miss Charlotte, Miss Charlotte. Oh, Tina, darling, what's the matter? Can I sleep in here with you? Why, of course you can. <laughs> oh, has something happened? Something terrible. Oh? Uh -huh. That awful Miss Warner said there would be a nurse here for me tomorrow night. Oh. Why must I have a nurse? Nobody my age has a nurse. I'll be so ashamed. No, no, Tina, <laughs> Tina, listen to me. Listen, Tina. I'll talk to them tomorrow. 
I'll ask them to give you another trial without a nurse, hmm? I'm an old friend of Dr. Jackwood's, and I'll tell him, too. You leave it to me, will you? You're good to me. Why are you so good to me? Oh, lots of reasons. But one is enough. There was someone who was good to me once when I needed someone. I'll go to sleep, Tina, and I'll tell you a story. Here, I'll turn the bed down. Now then, close your eyes, make your muscles go all limp, and I'll tell you a story. There, that's better. Now pretend you're a child, because this story may be too young for you. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. And she was Dr. Jackwith, I have a proposition to make. My nurses tell me you're running cascades now. Oh. You've had Tina hiking, dancing, playing mm -hmm. tennis. I thought you came up here to have another nervous breakdown. Well, I decided not to have it. It was all the same to you. I'm not doing anything with my time. Couldn't I take care of Tina instead of a nurse? I promise to ask you about everything. I've already cancelled the nurse. Oh. Just go ahead. Tell me what you'd do. Oh, I'd just be with her and I'd pay her attention and make her feel wanted and important. And then as soon as you let me, I'd take her to Boston for a holiday. Why do you take such great personal interest in Tina? Well, I know her father. He was on my cruise. He... Uh... I thought perhaps you knew. <laughs> well, I don't see how you could know, except that you seem to know so many things. No, I didn't know. If I had known, I certainly wouldn't have advised you to come to Cascades at present. No? I had no idea you'd ever met uh, Durant's. Oh. I don't know how emotionally involved you are with him, but I can't work in the dark when there's a child in the picture. Well, I'll tell you everything. It's over. That's everything in two words, Doctor. It's over. Dr. Jackwith, Tina needs me, and I need her. Well, I'm crazy... But if you promise to behave yourself... Oh, I'll tell her. But you're only on probation. Hmm? Remember what it says in the Bible, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. How does it feel to be the Lord? Oh, not so very wonderful since the free will bill was passed. <laughs> Too little power. <laughs> oh, I love you, Dr. Jackwith. I love you, Charlotte Vale. Charlotte and Tina brought great good to one another and great happiness. Charlotte found the child she had missed and Tina, the mother. I got permission from the Orants for Tina to go to Boston with Charlotte and many months later I took him down with me to visit them. I was a little nervous about that meeting and more than a little apprehensive when Charlotte and Jerry went in the library and closed the door. How do you like your daughter, Jerry? She's lovely. But, Charlotte, I'm going to take her home. Oh, no. No, you can't. Oh, Dr. Jackwood said it would be the worst thing in the world for Tina to go home now. I don't care what he says. No self-respecting man could allow such self-sacrifice as yours to go on indefinitely. It's oh, the most conventional, pretentious, pious speech I've ever heard you make in your life, Jerry. I simply don't know you. I can't go on forever taking, taking, oh. taking from you and giving nothing, darling. Oh, Jerry, don't you see? You will be giving. Don't you know that to take is to give sometimes? The most beautiful way in the world of two people love each other. Oh, besides, Jerry, you'll be giving me Tina. Every single day, I'll be taking, taking, taking. And you'll be giving. I don't want my child to come along and take your whole life. When you should be spending it with some man who'll make you happy. Oh, so that's it. Some man to make me happy. Here have I been living under the delusion that you and I were so in sympathy that you knew without being told what would make me happy. When Tina wanted to come home with me and stay, it was like a miracle happening. And I allowed myself to indulge in the fancy that both of us loving her and doing what was best for her together would make her seem actually like our child after a while. Oh, but I see that I've been just a big sentimental Wait fool. a minute, Miss Pepper. Oh, let go of me. Now I know. Now I know that it won't die what's between us. Do what we will. Ignore it. Neglect it. Starve it. It's stronger than both of us together. Oh, Charlotte. Let me go, Jerry. Jerry. Dr. Jackwith knows about us. When he let me take Tina, he said, you're on probation. You know what he means. He allowed me this visit of yours, but it's a test. If I can't stand such tests, I'll lose Tina in time, and we lose each other. Jerry, Jerry, will you help me? Shall, shall we just have a cigarette on it? Thank you. May I come here sometimes? Whenever you like. It's your home, too. People who love you live here. 
And may I sometimes smoke a cigarette with you? And just sit here with you in understanding silence? Of course. We can always light our cigarettes from the same flame. That is, if you'll help me keep what we have. If we both try hard to protect that little strip of territory that's been given to us. I can talk to you once in a while about your child. Our child. Jerry, thank you. And will you be happy, Charlotte? Will it be enough? I will be happy, Jerry. It must be enough. And so the case was concluded, the patient dismissed. The Voyager had reached his destination. In a moment, we'll bring back our star, Maureen O'Sullivan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Maureen O'Sullivan. Ladies and gentlemen, to sum up the spirit of the Shenley Laboratories program, the simple and beautiful prayer of the physician, written centuries ago by Maimonides, seems to me to be apt and fitting. The eternal providence has appointed me to watch over the life and death of all thy creatures. May I always see in the patient a fellow creature in pain. Grant me strength and opportunity always to extend the domain of my craft. This is the prayer of the physician. It is ages old, yet today it is as new as the hope for a peaceful way of life for all the world. May we invite you to listen again next week at the same time when Shenley Laboratories presents Dr. Ulrich's Magic Bullet, starring Charles Bickford. A great star in a great story. Good night. <laughs> Now Voyager was produced and directed by Bill Lawrence and was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. It was a Gene Holloway adaptation. This is Frank Grahams and inviting you to listen next Tuesday at the same time when you'll hear Charles Bickford in Dr. Ehrlich's Magic Bullet. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.